to emphasize the role of the Pope even more, you have a conflict arising in Western Europe in 1074. What is the conflict? Between um, the Emperor of Germany, Henry IV, and uh, Pope Gregory VII. The conflict is very great. You need to read the documents that were written at the time. And what Gregory VII, uh, what, the, what was the fight about? The fight was, who appoints the bishops? Bishops are very important people in the church. Not only are they spiritual leaders of a community, but up until modern times, they also were, they were the, the rulers of, a, of an area, of a state, and they had control and power over money and people and property and uh, uh, extensive uh, estates. So bishops were very significant figures. The question is, who appoints the bishops? Well, the emperor, Henry IV, said, um, they're my bishops. I mean, this is uh, Germany. It's my country. I appoint the bishops. The Pope said, well, that's impossible. Only God can appoint the bishops. I represent God. And therefore, the bishop <coughs> appoints the bishop. Um, you know, it's interesting. The, the conflict is called in history books the investiture conflict, the investiture. What does that mean? Uh, who gives the clothing to the bishop? Who vests him? Because when a bishop is appointed, certain garments are added to him. A bishop wears purple, a cardinal wears scarlet. These, the official garments of the clergy represent the office. So who gives the garments to the clergy? The emperor said, it's my prerogative. And the pope said, well, you can't do that. Only the church can do it. Only the pope can do it. So they were fighting over who is the one who gives the garments to the bishop, uh, namely, who appoints the bishops. Well, the, the fight became serious. At a certain point, Pope Gregory uh, published a papal bull, an official document. And he said, if the emperor does not uh, pledge total obedience to, to Christ, then uh, he is, uh, cannot be in communication with the church. So in effect, he excommunicated the emperor. Now, you might say, under certain circumstances, he couldn't thumb his nose at the pope as if to say, so you excommunicated me, what does that mean? You see, the point is, when he was excommunicated, he was in a very serious situation. Because once he was excommunicated, then he cannot go to mass, he cannot be accepted in the church, and, and the population has to separate themselves from him. In effect, his power was, it was amazing that that excommunication actually destroyed the power of the emperor. There was nothing he could do. Well, what could he do? He could ask the pope to forgive him. So he decided, well, he'll have to ask the pope to forgive him. And now you see how the power play becomes uh, rather ugly. Well, it's, it was from the beginning. He humiliates the emperor and forces him to get down on his knees in the snow at Canossa and to wait. Uh, he waited there for three days until the Pope said, OK, he came out and he forgave him. He went back to his position, but the, uh, the Pope had emerged as powerful. But in his argument, he says, you are trying to establish here what the Greeks are doing, namely the Byzantines, namely where they have emperor, an emperor who's superior politically to the spiritual. He says, here this will not happen because there is only one God and there one Christ and I'm the vicar of Christ on earth and so on. So you have then this um, reestablishment of the, or the establishment of the supremacy of the Pope in the Western world until the death of Francisco Franco, the kings of Spain had the power to name the bishops and the cardinals of Spain. They got that power because the time, notice the time when Martin Luther arose and Henry VIII broke away from the church and he was having conflicts with Spain and uh, the pope was, happened to be uh, pretty weak in that position 
and um, uh, the Emperor Henry, the, the Emperor Charles V of the Holy Roman Empire was the Emperor, was Charles I, Emperor of Spain. And they were in a position where if the Pope had gone against Spain on the issue of Catherine of Aragon and the divorce of Henry VIII, because, you know, Henry VIII wanted an annulment of his marriage to Catherine of Aragon, which the Pope could give, but he didn't. Now, if he had gone along with Henry VIII, and the church in Spain would have said, who needs you? They would have broken, too. So there was a kind of, uh, you could say, a tacit understanding that from now on, the kings of Spain are going to anoint the bishops and the cardinals, and so they, they made peace. And of course, Henry VIII did not get his annulment, and therefore he, he broke with the church and appointed his own bishop, and the whole thing starts the church, of the, the church of England. And Henry VIII, by the way, based his Church of England on the model of the Greek Orthodox Church of Constantinople, which is the emperors that politically head, and so on. But it's interesting because um, only after Francisco Franco died did the king of Spain, Juan Carlos, now, gave up that right. I mean, he returned the right to the pope in Rome because you know, he, didn't want, he doesn't want to keep that independence. But it's interesting. The Christian world, of course, was troubled with the many things that had happened, namely the rise of Islam, the conquest of the Holy Land by the infidel Muslims, and uh, now the split in the church. And then you have other things happening. And this leads to the wars known as the Crusades.